I did, I did beat him in that nearest pin challenge last year. So if he goes on to win majors, you know, I'm, I'm going to be holding that as a high achievement on my list. <laughs> well done. Inspired, well done. Inspired him. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He lost, he lost that and thought, that's it. I need to fix up now. The, the game starts now. Hi, guys, and welcome to the Golf Magic Chat Show. Uh, we're going to talk all things RBC Heritage, uh, the Travellers Championship, talk about Webb Simpson, uh, and there's also a chance for you to win some Adidas golf shoes. Uh, so let's get cracking. Come on in, lads. Talk us through it. RBC Heritage. Yeah, uh, slightly uh, disappointing picks, weren't it really, Jack? Uh, I had Zander and Bryson. Zander made the cut, finished well down the field, unfortunately. Uh, Bryson gave us uh, a run for money. He was there Saturday, really disappointing round. And as we said, Jack, why did he use his driver on exactly. that? Exactly that. He, he yeah. really found him out. You know, Thursday, Friday, he was, he was um, sort of plotting his way around the course really nicely. But for some reason, mm -hmm. he wanted to just overpower the course on Saturday. Um, really bad driving round for him. And that really cost him too much to do on Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, but another top 10 for Bryson. I think that's uh, five in a row. So Yeah, he's in good form. Good form. Play, yeah. But great yeah. to see Webb Simpson, uh, you know. Yeah, Big believe it or not, I was, I was tossing up between Kuchar and Simpson. Oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that seriously was. Went with Kuchar in the end, you got my best was tied 41. I mean, he shot 11 under. I mean, this tournament is yeah, such a low crazy. scoring tournament. It's still good golf, but you just can't beat it. It's such a hard one to predict when people go out there shooting 20, 21 under par. But no, Webb is brilliant. I mean, for, for, such a, for a guy that's, you know, clearly his speed isn't up there with the likes of DeChambeau. He's such a brilliant driver of the ball and he's, yeah. so, he's so accurate with those woods off the tee. And that really helped him last week. Incredible yeah. putting as well, wasn't it, on the final round, yeah. really? Just five birdies in six holes to, to seal it. It's seventh PJ Tour win, up to career mm -hmm. high of world number five now. So, yeah, Webb's playing really well at the minute. Brooks back as well, I think. Brooks, yeah. What a tee shot on nine as well. Probably shot yeah. the final round, wasn't it? 330 oh, yards to three feet, and not bad. But uh, yeah, good to see him back in form. Yeah, could be a weapon if he starts finding his form. Absolutely. Can we just talk about the fact that how good the whole tour is, and the fact that they are shooting numbers that low after such a long spell out? I mean, yeah, we weren't sure what to expect, were we, Jack? We, we didn't really know whether they're going to be really, really rusty, but... As we said last week, you know, you can see a few guys like John Rahm, who's clearly not the same player as he was before lockdown. Um, but then you look at the three-month layoff, where was Brooks Kepka at the players? Mm -hmm. You know, even then he was struggling. And even Claude Harmon said the other day, his trainer, his coach, that he kind of needed that three weeks. You know, if he had the majors coming this summer, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have contended in any of them. So the, the breaks know. benefited some players and probably been a hindrance for some others. Um, mm. But the scoring is fantastic. And... Uh, well, Daniel Berger, I mean, back-to-back, -back, yeah. <laughs> incredible amount of consecutive rounds on the par. He's absolutely flying at the minute. Mm -hmm. I found um, Rory's comments quite interesting, him saying that, you know, he sort of remembered why he doesn't play at the RBC Heritage often. And mm. he got quite a lot of reaction on our social media when we posted a story about it. People saying, oh, yeah. well, you're only going to play the tournaments where you play well then. Like, people saying it shows his level. Obviously, he's world number one. We know what his level is. But it, it was interesting comments. You know, you should be able to try and adapt it from courses, I think. Absolutely, yeah. Slightly strange comment, wasn't it? Because, I mean, yeah. at, the, at the end of the day, he didn't have to play it, you know? No. So. With that win for Webb, he now tops the FedEx Cup rankings. Mm -hmm. uh, do you guys actually think that, obviously, now world number five, can he sustain it? Yeah. I mean, I mean, Jack, you know what I feel about Webb Simpson. Uh, in my eyes, he is the most underrated uh, mm -hmm. player on the PGA Tour right now. Um, you know, this is a guy who won the, the US Open in 2012, first on the scene. Um, and then when the anchored putting ban came in in 2016, it kind of, it took him a while to get back. And, you know, just look at Keegan Bradley and how much he struggled having to, you know, go to a normal putter. Um, but I think Webb's figured that out now. He's, he's still using a longer putter, but he's using the claw grip, not anchored to his body. So it's all very legal. Um, mm. You know, seven PGA Tour wins now. He's a US Open champion, won the Players Championship two years ago. Um, he's won two of his last four starts. He's had four top threes in his last seven. And, and as you say, he's at the top of the FedEx Cup standings, and rightly so. Um, you know, as you touched on Jack at the top of the show, really, he's not got the power and the panache of a Bright yeah. and a Rory and a Brooks. And That's what I was going to say. It's, in, it's interesting Black. to see someone like Webb Simpson, who a few years ago his putting wasn't that good. I mean, now he seems to be, I mean, last week he was nailing putts left, right, and centre. And it's great to see someone who, you know, you don't look at him and he's not this big athletic type. He's not a Bryson trying to pile on pounds. He's not trying to 
murder the ball and rip it with speed. You know, he's just a, a yeah. huge, solid player. And he's got into yeah. world number five. And like you said, top of the FedEx rankings at the moment. Um, if he can hold that position, then I'll be extremely impressed. He's got a host of talent behind him. He's got Dustin Thomas just 40, uh, points behind, Sung J. Im, Roy McIlroy, Patrick Reed. There's some really top players up there. Um, and like I said, there's a long way to go still. So if he, if he can hold that position, it'd be extremely impressive. I think he's he's just a complete package at the minute, and you know he's just he just does everything very well. You know, as you say, he doesn't have the flashiest golf swing, does he? But you know, off the tee, around the course last last week as well, where you know you need to keep it in play, you need to hit it close on tiny greens, and you need to putt well. And he did everything last week. So, um, that is quite interesting. A lot of the time, you think he's he's sort of hit a bad shot and he's trying to save it because he has that quick <laughs> sort of turnover, doesn't he? It looks like he's maybe planted it a bit wide and he's trying to wrap it around. And then you see it flying out the middle of the fairway. So, so it's, it's definitely an interesting swing, but no, Very it's unique. Some brilliant golf. Yeah. All right. So let's let's talk about Tyrrell then. Um, obviously, yeah. finished finished tied third with Daniel Berger. Um, mm. Looked strong. Um, strong. Yeah. yeah. He's playing out his skin at the moment. You know that would have been back to back wins for him. Obviously, that was before lockdown when he won the Bay Hill, and I think winning at Bay Hill, his first PJ Tour win has given him so much confidence. Uh, you know, already a confident player, having won big events, Relic Series events, Alfred Dunhill links on the European Tour. But to win, you know, at Arnie's place was was huge for him uh, mentally. And, you know, talking of his mental side, I guess that's maybe been the one criticism of Tyrrell Hatton in the past is that one shot can lead to three or four bad shots, as it has with mm. John Rahm in the past. Um, but speaking to his manager, you know, Mark McDonald, Modest Golf, um, you know, he's he's a complete golfer at the minute. And, you know, you have to feel that Till Hatton now can start looking at majors. He's on the cusp of the world's mm-hmm. top 10. Um, you know, he's a, he's a huge talent and, you know, has every chance of becoming the next European major winner, I, I believe. I, I spoke to Hatton at an Adidas event last year at the Grove. And that was, that was before his PJ Tour win. And the difference in confidence between now and back then it's phenomenal. If you look at him, the way he's playing, he, I mean, before the lockdown, he was topping some PGA Tour stats. I think it was in low scoring round, something like that. He was, he was fan out of his skin, like you said, Andy. And when I spoke to him last year, I, I said to him some things like, you, you know, you're, you're quite a good links player. You have, a, you have some great results in the Dunhill. Could you, could you possibly win the Open? And straight away, he turned to negative and said, you know, my, my results in the Open aren't very good, so probably not. And then, and then I'm talking about Ryder Cup, and he's saying, oh, I just want to make the team again to prove it wasn't a fluke sort of thing. And you look back, that's not yeah. someone yeah. who, you know, is shining with confidence. So you look at him now, and like I said, he's, he's a top performing Englishman at the moment. He's in such high form. And mm-hmm. if he makes that Ryder Cup team now, he's going to be one of our best players in that team. Absolutely, yeah. How, how well did he play at the weekend? Oh, brilliant. It's got to be fantastic. You know, when you thought he was, I think, I think he bogeyed a whole idiot until the back nine of the final round or something like that. So, That's incredible. clutch fighting was fantastic. Every time he looked like he was about to drop a, drop a, uh, drop a shot, yeah. he just pulled it right back. And he led the strokes game putting by a long way last week. Webb, Webb was very close, but I didn't see Tyrrell miss a putt really inside 10 feet on Saturday and mm-hmm. Sunday. Incredibly, on Saturday, you know, after his, his interview on Saturday, he's saying, you know, I don't feel comfortable over the ball. He just shot eight under. I mean, yeah. If that's where you're, you know, you're not happy with an eight under round, that's setting the, no. setting the bar high, isn't it? So, yeah, I think Till was playing great and it, I wouldn't be surprised to see him pick up another win very soon. I did, I did beat him in that nearest pin challenge last year. So, if he goes on to win majors, you know, I'm going to be holding that as a high achievement on my list. <laughs> well, done, inspired, well done. Inspired him, yeah. <laughs> exactly. He lost, he lost that after West. I need to fix up now. The, the game <laughs> starts now. <laughs> Uh, talking to Tyrrell Hatton, obviously we've got a competition this week. Uh, yep. Andy, do you want to kind of talk through what the shoes are? Yeah, so we're giving away a pair of uh, the shoes that Tyrrell Hatton uh, and Sergio wore last week. It's the new Adidas Golf Code Chaos. Uh, it's their summer limited edition golf shoe. All right, so to enter to win them golf shoes, uh, all you need to do is subscribe to the Golf Magic YouTube channel and comment below uh, with your shoe size. Uh, good luck. Uh, we'll pick a winner at random next week. Okay, cool. Time to look ahead. Uh, let's have a look yes. at the travellers. Um, who you got? Who you back in this week? Cool. Well, you can probably guess who I might be picking this <laughs> week uh, on what I've said in the show today. But I think while Webb Simpson is this hot, 20 to 1 looks a big price. Uh, I think it's a golf course that will fit his eye at the moment. As I say, two wins in his last four. 
four top threes in his last seven starts. Uh, he's got a, um, a top 10 here in the past as well, so he does like the course. Um, it's tough to win back-to-back, let's be honest. It is tough to win back-to-back, but Daniel tough. Berger nearly did it last week. Tyrrell Hatton nearly won two in a row as well. It is possible. Um, but I like the way he's playing at the minute of the, of the, you know, the big guns. I think he's playing very, very consistently. And uh, yeah, I think he'll go well at 20 to 1 this week. Mm-hmm. And my next pick is 33 to 1. I'm actually very surprised he's 33 to 1 after the way he played last week. But it's uh, Abraham Anser from mm-hmm. Mexico. Not one on tour yet, but I think TPC River Islands is a, is a great fit for him. He's not the longest hitter, um, but he's very accurate. You know, he led the driving accuracy last week. He missed only seven greens last week at Heritage, which is incredible. I think that's a new record at that course. 65 to 75 greens is incredible. And they're tiny greens over there as well. Um, he's admitted to playing a lot of golf during lockdown, which I like. Um, he's got, he came tied eighth here last year as well. Um, I think this could be the week that he gets his maiden PJ Tour victory. And at, at that price, great each way shout anyway. Definitely. Uh, I'm going to start with um, Justin Rose at 28 to 1. Mm. Um, he's finding some good form lately. You know, he's had all the trouble with the equipment behind him now. You know, he's, he's playing comfortably again. He looks yep. good. Yeah. Um, and that part looks hot at the moment. And, and Putin's an important part of your game around, um, yeah, around this course. So I think 28 to 1 is a good price for Justin Rose. Uh, second pick, I'm going for Bubba Watson, 33 to 1. Yeah. Um, tied seven for the Charles Schwab Challenge a few weeks ago. Decent performance of the RBC Heritage, not quite in the top, but like I said, such a low scoring performance, it's, it was hard to be up there. Um, he's a three time winner of this tournament at this course, winning it in 2010, 2015, and 2018. So I think 33 to 1, he's looking good at the moment, seems comfortable, seems more relaxed. I think he could be a bit quite dangerous this week. Um, and a little shout for Mark Leishman, he's out there at 50 to 1, um, not a very good form. He, he missed the part of the Charles Schwab Challenge, he didn't play last week, uh, but he's just a good price for a horses for courses pick. Definitely, yeah. Well, cheers, guys. Um, good luck for the picks next week. Thank you. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah, and everyone, don't forget, um, if you want to win them Adidas shoes, uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, and leave a comment below with uh, your shoe size. Cheers.